They're hitting your stationary points and points of inflection. This is the time to learn this now. So I'm going to get another piece of paper to write underneath. Uh, this is the time to learn this now because you now know what these things are and you know how to find them and you know what first and second derivative and all that kind of thing, okay? So we're going to go through them one step at a time. The first page, the one with the heading on it, is stationary points. So you can write up here. This is for stationary points. Everything we're about to say, all the steps and um, thought processes that I'm going to explain, they all have to do with stationary points. Okay. Now, you guys can help me with a lot of this. You can help me with a huge amount of it, okay? What's the very first thing you need to do if you get given a function, y equals, you know, this cube, blah, 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 you want to find stationary points, there's a first step you have to do before anything can happen. What is it? Differentiate. Yeah, you should differentiate, find the first derivative. Okay, so let's write that down. That is the first step right here. Find dy and dx. You can't do anything until you have the first derivative. Okay? Now from there, once you've got the first derivative, there's something that you're looking for. You're kind of looking for two things, and again, this is kind of what we were talking about last lesson. Um, you're looking for places where that first derivative either is zero or whether it doesn't exist. Okay, those are both important to us. So we would call those the places where the first derivative is zero. We call them zeros, um, or places where the first derivative doesn't exist. We would call them discontinuities in the derivative. Okay, uh, please note that I don't mean discontinuities in the graph itself. If the graph itself is discontinuous, I know there won't be stationary points there because the graph is not there. So there's no point, so you can't have a stationary point. So what we're looking for are uh, zeros or discontinuities, question mark, okay? Now, for many cases, there will not be any zeros or discontinuities. For example, um, when we get to exponential functions, like you know what an exponential function looks like? It goes like this, okay? Um, and even though you don't know yet how to differentiate it, you can know it's never gonna turn. Okay, and it has no breaks in it, okay? So therefore, it doesn't have zeros or discontinuities. So if there are none, right, then there are no stationary points. Full stop, you can go home. That's nice, okay, that happens. In fact, sometimes um, the question will say, you know, prove that such and such a function has no stationary points. And what you're doing is finding the derivative, showing that whatever function it is, the derivative, has no zeros or discontinuities, therefore I'm done, okay? Of course, that is not what usually happens in these kinds of questions. Usually we are expecting, yes, there will be a, um, a zero or discontinuity or several of them. At which point now we have a choice. You guys now know there are two ways to, after this box up here, which is locate the stationary points, we need to determine nature now, right? And we have two methods for this. What was the first method I showed you? Table of values. The table of values for the first derivative. So over here on the left, I'm going to call this the first derivative, dy on dx, table of values. Okay, now before we look at the alternative method, which you, we were looking at just recently, um, if you do do the table of values, which you will do many times, um, there will be one of three outcomes that will happen out of that. Once you have a look at you know, this value, this value, this value, what are the three possible things you could get after you do the table? Minimum. You could get a minimum, you could get a maximum, or you could get a horizontal point of inflection. Don't forget, all of this is after I've gotten a, um, a zero for the first few years. So not just a regular point of inflection, it's a horizontal one. So straight out of the table of values, you'll just read off it, you'll either get a maximum, or a minimum, or a horizontal point of inflection. Okay? And you'll read that, bless you, off of the signs of the first derivative on the left and the right. Okay, you happy with that? So that's the first part. But we have learned with the second derivative, because the second derivative tells us about concavity, we can take that um, as a way to determine the nature of this stationary point, right? So instead of the first derivative, over here I'm choosing my second option. We look at the <coughs> second derivative. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the second derivative to check concavity, right? Check, is it concave up or is it concave down? Okay, now concave up, concave down, what that corresponds to is the second derivative and its sign. Okay, so if the second derivative is negative, you know what's going to happen. If the second derivative is positive, you know what's going to happen. In other words, so long as the second derivative is not zero, if it's a positive or a negative number, then you know exactly what's going to happen. Either you have a maximum or you have a minimum. Right? So in some ways, I've used that test. I found, ooh, concave up, that's a minimum. Or alternatively, concave down. 
that, that happens when the second degree is, is a number that's not zero, okay? That's great, and then you're at the end of the line. Alternatively though, the second derivative can be zero. We've seen examples of this, right? So if the second derivative is zero, now we have another question to ask, right? What might this point be? I've already found that the first derivative is zero, and now I've found the second derivative is zero. What could it be? What possible things do I have? Let me give you a clue. I know it's not a max or a min. It could be, it could be a horizontal point of inflection, right? Maybe. But I don't actually know, do I? Because what was the example we looked at this morning? We looked at x to the power of 4, right? That coordinate. Now, at that point, we've gotten a 0 for the first derivative. I've gotten a 0, zero for the second derivative, but it's, it's not. That actually isn't a horizontal point of inflection. So I don't know yet. I can't just conclude, oh, cool, both derivatives are 0, I'm done. In fact, at this point, to really show it's a point of inflection, I have to say more than just tell me the concavity, I have to do a table of values, but for the second derivative. Okay? Now, I have to look to the left, I have to look to the right, and I have to see what's going on. Okay? Now, if indeed there is a change in concavity, we're all good, everything's fine, I have a point of inflection. Thanks, Hi. She's right there. Sorry, Jonas. Did you get, was that you who did the? Yes, I okay. was. No, that's fine. Yeah, I was like, I just felt really antisocial and then I contemplated going back and being like, hi everybody, I'm not deliberately for you. No, that's okay, you get to say hi now. Okay, so I was just getting Okay. Sorry, I was mid-sentence. If I do the table of values and I find, like I really want, that there is a change in concavity, right? My second derivative goes from negative to positive, or positive to negative. Then that's great. I've got a point of inflection, and because I already know the first derivative is zero, it's flat, right? Therefore, it's a horizontal point of inflection. But of course, it might not change in concavity, right? And we were just looking at that x to the 4 example. If there is no change, I've got bad news for you, buddy. You have to go back to the first derivative, right? Because if there's no change in concavity, you know it's a stationary point and you know it's not a horizontal point of inflection, it could still be either a max or a min. And the, the second derivative doesn't tell you. You must resort back to the first derivative, find out what's going on the left, what's going on the right, and then you can make a conclusion about whether it's a max or a min. Okay? So even though it's like, hey, cool, I don't have to do the table of values anymore, it's like, well, if there's a special enough case, you're gonna get the longest possible path through here is derivative, zero, second derivative, Second you do zero, got to do my table of values, and then there's no change, so then I do another table of values, sometimes that will happen. Now, here's the thing, right? Be smart about it, okay? You get some choices. So if you see y equals x to the 4, an example that I have specifically shown you, then don't check the concavity using the second derivative, right? It's not going to help you determine the nature of that stationary point. You should recognize it. You should say, forget it. Uh, this is going to be no use to me. I'm going to go straight to the table of values for the first room. It's not the quickest, but you don't have a choice to avoid it. You have to do that for such a choice. Okay. Does that make sense? Any questions? So there you go. That's stationary points. Let's turn it over.